I just want to share something about the celebration of Christmas and how Jesus coming to earth, his death and resurrection is so relevant to us today. I want to base what I want to share around the word reconciliation. The dictionary describes this word reconciliation as making friends again after an estrangement or quarrel, to harmonise or harmony between people. The first and greatest reconciliation in our world took place when the barrier between God and mankind was dealt with by God. Our sin separated us from him. Only a pure sacrifice for sin could deal with this. It needed a pure, sinless person to be willing to die, not for his own sin, but for the sins of the world. Jesus did this, and in doing so, she also showed us how to live together in harmony, loving and caring for one another, and not allowing hurts and differences of opinion to spoil that by being willing to forgive and forget when things come between us. The Lord's Prayer in the Scriptures has a line that says, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. When love and grace and reconciliation are flowing in a family, it sets the scene for a loving, caring atmosphere that can be felt by others. One of the main things that is so important in the ability to recognise our mistakes and be ready to say sorry. We don't like that. Something rises up inside us when we're admitting that we're wrong. It doesn't sit well. But it is the self that is put on the wound, the saying sorry, and it helps to heal. When Jesus was teaching his disciples, he taught them a golden rule found in Matthew 7, verse 12. Do for others what you would like them to do for you. This is a summary of all that is taught in the Law and Prophets. Sadly, for many families, the getting together at Christmas can be foreboding. Family feuds and differences of opinion can spoil and mar the atmosphere. Allowing disagreement to fester sours the soul. Deal with them quickly so that when Christmas comes and families gather, it's not spoiled by simmering undercurrents. Some useful advice in scripture to help us deal with these issues is found in Paul's letters to the churches. In Ephesians 4 verses 2 to 3, it says, Be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves together with peace. And then in verses 26 and 27 of that chapter, and don't sin by letting anger take control of you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of malicious behaviour. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven us. Colossians 3 says this, Since God chose you to be holy people whom he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. You must make allowances for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And the most important piece of clothing you must wear is love. Love is what binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body you are called to live together in peace. And finally, in Hebrews we read this, Try to live at peace with everyone, and seek to live a clean and holy life, for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other, 
so that none of you will miss out on the special favour of God. Watch out that no bitter root of unbelief rises among you, for whenever it springs up, many are corrupted by its poison. God's word is powerful. It gives us so much practical advice on how we should live, and I hope these verses come as an encouragement to love as we have been loved by Jesus. Lastly, Christmas is a time of giving. There are so many needy people around us, and as well as what we might be thinking of giving each other, wouldn't it be good to give a gift to someone who's not really expecting it? To finish, I'd like to leave you with this verse of a hymn. Reconciled, I'm reconciled, I'm reconciled to God forever. Know he took away my sin, and I know his love will leave me never. Reconciled, I am his child, I know it was for me he died. I'm reconciled, I'm reconciled to God. And I wish you a happy, harmonious and blessed Christmas.